Guys, wake up, the new Joker trailer just dropped and we need to recreate Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn costume. I've never made a jacket before, so no wonder this is hard. I'm Mackenzie and welcome back to my YouTube channel where I take you on the behind the scenes journey of my latest costume slash cosplay making project. Today we're going to be remaking Lady Gaga's Harley Quinn outfit from the new Joker movie. And I'm gonna really butcher the pronunciation of the title. It's Joker 2 Folie a Du. Let's look that up. Folie a Dur. Folie a Dur? Folie a Dur. That can't be right. Folie a Dur. I've been waiting to finish this costume for over a year because that's when the original photos leaked on March 25th of 2023. With that said, I'm going to take you back in time a year to see how we started off this project. Okay, it's been about two hours since the first pictures of Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn came out, so let me give you my plan. I haven't been this excited about a costume since I saw the pictures of Margot as Barbie, and I'm like foaming at the mouth. I'm chomping at the bit. I'm like a feral cat. I don't know if that's good things to say about myself, but anyways, here's the plan. I got a thick, it's like a heavyweight satin. The plan is that I'm gonna sew in the Harlequin print myself, so I have to do that. This is what I got to line the jacket with. This is like quilting fabric from Joanne, but I chose this because it's 100% cotton, which means I won't get as sweaty as if I lined that jacket with polyester or something. So this is just like for me, for fun. This is the fabric that I got from Spoonflower. I think it's gonna be a good size. The Harlequins are like, I think they're like two and a half or three inches wide this way. And then they're about four inches this way. So I think that'll fit based on the amount that she has showing on her bodice. Then I got this off-white fabric. It's like kind of sheer. And then I'm gonna do this as the lining on the bottom and I'm going to pleat it and do that around the top. Her jacket has one of these little closures in the front, so I'm just gonna use that. And then the last thing, so her sleeve has that little puff of pleated tulle, and if you follow me already, you are familiar with this dress. This is Margot Robbie's Harley red dress from the Suicide Squad 2021. This is the fabric that I'm going to be using. I have leftover in my parents' basement, so I have to go collect that tomorrow, and then we can get started, but it's like exact. So I'll see you back when I have this stuff turned into the Harlequin pattern. I started off by making my diamond stencil that I'm going to be just placing all over this fabric and tracing down with my little chalk pencil. And it was five yards of fabric, so it did take me quite, quite, quite a long time. Now being a year out from when I actually did this portion of the project, I do realize two things. One, her fabric is probably actually a red taffeta because it's not as shiny as my satin is. It's more of like a reflective matte. I don't know how to describe that. It's almost like metallic looking. Uh, but anyways, they do make red taffeta fabric that already has this Harlequin pattern all over it. So if I do decide to make the jacket again, I'll definitely be doing that because this step took me like a week. And they're also sneaky was math involved in this. So I got all of the angles right. I had to do math. I had to find, um, I had to use C, C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And after that big brain moment, this is what the fabric was looking like. I was going from the outer corners in so I can make sure that all of the lines aligned. And then I'm going to be ironing this down along each of those lines that I drew and then sewing a very close stitch to the edge so that it has that like puckered lifted effect that hers does. And even though it was a lot of work, it came out so crispy and so clean. And I just love a monotonous task like this because you can just turn off your brain and go with it. With the fabric finished, I had a little bit of steam left in the tank before I dropped this project for a year and I started patterning out on my mannequin how I wanted to alter the jacket pattern that I was starting with. Then I cut out half the pieces, lost my hyperfixation on this project, switched to Barbie, and now let's have a time jump to a year ahead. It has been a long time since I worked on this project and I will tell you exactly how long. I got really hyperfixated on making the fabric into all of those diamonds and then I stopped. So that was March 25th, 2023. And it's actually over a year, so let's get back into it because the trailer is about to drop on April 9th. And for me, it's uh, April 6th. So I'm gonna try to make this in three days now. I had a year, but now I'm gonna make it in three days because that's how I roll. And I had to dive into the craft closet quite deeply 
to find the pattern pieces and everything I had cut out. So I'll show you where we are at present. Here are a bunch of reference pictures to see the pattern that I'm going for. And for you, it's just two minutes later into the video. But for me, I have to get reacquainted with the lay of the land. So this is the rest of the jacket. When the news broke last year, I had a lot of mixed feelings about um, replacing Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn in the DC universe. I needed to mourn the loss of Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, but now I'm excited again. This is roughly the shape. See? Okay. We have to sew this together and make it make sense. Let's take all these pieces, cut them out of the lining fabric, and then start sewing it together so we can make some progress. And now we begin the speed run of me trying to make this jacket in a day and blindly trusting that the pattern that I made over a year ago is going to work out. Basically, I'm starting out by taking all the existing pattern pieces that I had and cutting them out of my lining fabric. For the front two pieces where the collar folds over, I'm using an unaltered version of that same satin fabric that I used for the rest of the jacket. My plan right now is I'm putting together the jacket, but I'm doing a very rough, like, I'm acting like this is the mock-up even though it's the final portion because I wanna get an idea for the fit because I would like to line this correctly instead of just sandwiching the fabric on top of each other and having all of these exposed seams. So I'm doing a super loose seam that's gonna be easy to unpick and then I'll know what shape I need to make everything. So that's the plan. It's an extra step, but it's probably gonna take me less time than making a full mock-up would. And what a surprise. It did actually take me much longer than just doing a normal mock-up would have, but that's, I can't. I will never do a mock-up, that's just who I am. Um, so I immediately already made a mistake. I sewed the wrong panel to the wrong panel. So let's see if this stitch is really that easy to undo. The fast and furious method, probably not the best approach. Let's try that again, shall we? Okay, I have made an extremely ill-fitting vest, so let's try it on, and then we'll start taking it in. See, this is exactly why I have to do this step, because I'm unwilling to make a mock-up. Um, Alright, let's just take it in everywhere. Since I tried to make the diamonds the same size as hers, I'm going to use those as a reference and kind of a grid to how to fit the jacket. Um, so this needs to come in in the back. This section here should only be about one diamond wide. And then the front section should be about two diamonds wide here. And then this section is about two and then goes down to one because it has, it gets skinny. Is about three diamonds. So I'm gonna take that information and see what I can do with it. Also, I'm realizing that it has shoulder pads and I don't know how to do those. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave the shoulders big and see what happens. Coming together, I need to let this seam out and I'm going to overlay the flat satin on top, which is gonna fold over like this, but it's only gonna fold over until this point. <sighs> okay, I have it roughly shaped the way I want it to be. So now all I have to do is unpick this whole thing Cut the other side to mirror this side, and then cut the lining pieces to be the same size as this. And then if I have done this correctly, it should fit nicely and the lining will just slip inside. I've never made a jacket before, so no wonder this is hard. One piece separated. Second piece separated. All of this to go. This is a seam unpicking prison of my own making. I'll be back when I'm done. This piece is staying the same, so this is fine. Once I had everything taken apart, I just overlaid the pieces that were the right size onto the pieces that were the wrong size, cut them together, and then did the same thing with my lining pieces. And additionally, I'm putting this little strip of the flat satin on the bottom so that if you see the edge of it for some reason, you won't see the little Harlequin poking through. You'll just see more of the red fabric continued. With everything resized, I just sew it all back together and then I'm trying to figure out the length that I want to crop it to and still keep that peplum like it's a little bit higher in the front, lower in the back shape. This is kind of cute by itself. <laughs> Look at this little guy. Okay, fun. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that I took all of the time. I basically added an extra three hours to this project because I wanted to have this happening. Um, I don't even care that it doesn't line up. Then it's coming together. 
Okay, so things seem to be going pretty well to this point. So now we just need to assemble these two together and I'm gonna start by going around the bottom and then up the sides um, in the front, which would be the collar area. Moment of truth. Something is not quite right. Basically the problem was that it was just too fluffy on the inside, so I really carefully went around each of the seams and pulled them as tight as I could to the edge and pressed it down really flat for a long time with my iron. Okay, checking in now. I'm gonna try it on and do the top stitch down this edge. Um, that way I can take out these 700 pins so I don't stab myself during the next try on. It looks like a white. Once I added the top stitch to the collar, I was ready to move on to the sleeves. So I just started hacking away based on where my mannequin's shoulders were because we have roughly the same width of shoulders just to get a closer edge. New messy angle unlocked. Um, I can't be bothered. I put this sleeve on already and because I am notoriously really bad at putting on sleeves and afraid of sleeves, I had to do this one off camera just to get the ideas down. I'm actually slightly shocked that this is working, um, but let's not say that too soon because we have another sleeve to put on and sleeves are the hardest thing in the world for me. So I am just pinning around this hole, this sleeve hole that I've created. And after I do that, I'm gonna sew it down. Then I'll take the sleeve inside out and sew it down this area. Then I will make a little I'll just cuff the edge with my iron and then sew that down and then sew the flounce around and that flounce has two layers. So that's the plan. All right, she's pinned and I'm gonna sew this together and I will see you tomorrow. I'm signing off for today. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> We're now switching gears to do the corset, and I'm so sorry, but I did not film me putting the sleeve on. I sometimes am an unreliable narrator, and my motivation just sinks to absolute zero, and I can't, I can't be bothered to film because I just need to accomplish the task of putting the sleeves on because they're very scary to me. But anyways, I'm taking this pattern that I used for my Lucy Gray cosplay, and I saved it luckily so I know that it fits me, and I'm just tracing out and altering how I want it to fit for this corset. Day two of working on this. I have another Harley Quinn themed outfit on today. You can't see, but I'm wearing matching pants. Bit match. Ah, I just knocked over the... Just knocked over the iron. That's not so good. But anyways, they match. Anyways, I started patterning what I think is going to be a good shape for the corset. It's a stay. I'm making it a stay. I have absolutely no idea what the back looks like. This is the picture I'm working with as the best reference I can find. So she's going like this. You can see a little bit of the straps. So this is the shape we're going with. And then I'm going to put a lace up back because I have no idea what the back of this shirt corset stay looks like. So I'm going to make it lace up because I think I can tell that there's definitely boning happening in the front. That's the only clue that I need. So we're gonna cut this out of the fabric, which just spilled water all over. I got this on spoon flour and I've had it for over a year and I still haven't washed it. So we're just gonna not wash it because I wanna use it today. It's pretty thick, so that's good. Uh, okay, this is kind of hard for me to watch back because I'm about to make a mistake here because I'm thinking in my head that I have two chances at cutting this out just based on how I'm imagining the size of this is because I didn't measure. So I folded it down, ironed down that seam to make sure that the diamond was exactly in half so it would be centered. And then I just started cutting it out along the edge of the pattern I made and just, I'm, I'm not doing any seam allowance really. So that's a problem. Oh no. Okay, I'm in a bit of a situation here. I pretty much just cut right into the fabric. A uh, bad idea, probably should have, probably should have tried on the little mock-up piece. Um, probably should have cut more of a seam allowance, but basically it's too high cut on the sides. Like what do I do about that? Um, what do I do? The back is like gonna be a disaster because look how high cut it's coming up. I mean, it does have that little flounce, 
and we don't know what the back looks like, so it's just gonna have to be like a weird cropped back corset. It's like reverse mullet. And I've made mistakes, but it's fine. So let's cut this same shape out of duck fabric now. Oh, okay, whatever, moving on. At this point, I have no choice but to lean into the shape that I've cut because this is where we're at. So I'm just cutting it out of a black duck fabric to add more stability because I want it to be extra stiff. I've decided I'm not gonna be stressed about that mistake anymore. So that, we can't, we can't control that. So I'm just gonna proceed. And worst case scenario, I remake this. This is my mock-up and I get to wear it as like a cute shirt. So regardless, I think it's gonna be cute. I've sewed together the black duck fabric and a layer of white muslin fabric. And this is gonna be where I'm gonna put my boning channels and then overlay the diamond pieces on top so that you can't see them. I'm gonna make half inch channels. Clearly me not having a plan and just jumping right into this project this morning was not my best choice. It was a little bit too fast, a little bit too loose. I'm just, just feeling really confident because the jacket went so well yesterday. I made the whole thing in one day and it's really hard for me to make jackets because of sleeves and it came out great. So I was just feeling like I could do anything. Corset, not hard. I've made a bunch of corsets in my lifetime before. Um, yeah, because usually when I make those, I take my time, not today. Okay, I'm gonna finish drawing these out, sew all of the lines together, and I will come back once that's done and we can insert the boning. All of these <laughs> seams are boning channels, and when I sew it together, it's like super linty right now, but this is gonna be the inside, so it looks kind of nice. At this point, I'm just deciding how many pieces of boning I wanna put in these channels, because I definitely made way too many of these seams, but I just wanted to, while I was at the sewing machine, just get them on there and then make the decisions later in case I needed to take in the sides. Um, but I did end up having to remove some of this boning later because I did put in way too much. And after that, I'm laying down my Harlequin piece on top and very carefully pinning where I want the edges to be. And I'm gonna do a very small seam to try to make up for the fact that I cut this piece much smaller without a seam allowance. So I just gotta be super careful. And then the most difficult part was turning this inside out as if all of the different levels of boning would make it easy. I don't know why I just thought I could do this because this is not normally how I would finish a corset. Normally I put like a bias tape around the edge so that I don't have to do this, but the seams came out crispy, so it was fine. I've been doing this since 5 a.m. It is now 7.15, uh, but it's not looking as bad as I thought it was going to, so... I really had to struggle with the whole turning it inside out process and then the boning was too long in some areas so it was poking through and some of the edges were fraying. Um, but now I think it's going to be fine. So I'm just going to iron it down super flat and we can put the grommets in. It is Monday the 8th so we're still on schedule to get this done. But if anyone's wondering, this is what I do before work. It's my five to nine before my nine to five. And it's also my five to nine after my nine to five. Some of the edges here, not perfect. And that's okay. Because we made this in about six hours. Somehow we've done it. I'm actually kind of shocked that it looks this good. I think it's gonna be such a cute top to just wear. I also have to put the ruffle here and the ruffle down here, but I can do that after work today and it's like gonna be basically done. So I'm like shocked. <laughs> okay, and after work for the finishing touches, I'm just taking two lightweight white like ivory fabrics and I'm ruffling one of them for the top. I know that hers in reality is probably the similar fabric to that um, red one that I put on the sleeves, which is like a tulle accordion fabric in ivory, but I didn't have that on me at the time. So I am not actually gonna sew this down. I'm just gonna pin it for the purposes until I do, go ahead and be able to make that upgrade. And then for the pleated piece that she has on the bottom, I'm also using a similar fabric, but it's a little bit thicker than that top one. And I cut out a very big V shape and I'm taking my overlocker with a rolled hem edge and just doing that along the edge to trim it. 
I did a very fast and loose hand pleating that I just sewed over and then I'm going to be clothes pinning to the inside of it because again, this is not my final fabric. This is just what I had left over in my supply closet. So this is not the final product, but it's good enough. Plus also I'm kind of thinking like maybe I wanna wear this corset as a shirt because it's actually so cute. So I don't know, but we'll see. It's almost time for the reveal. Okay, so we have made it very far in the process of making this costume. I've made all the pieces that I need to. I washed and styled the wig. The blazer is done. The corset stay top is done. And now before I get to the reveal, I'm gonna show you the other two components of the costume that I'm gonna pull together for this look. I'm gonna be using this Free People vegan, it's just leather, leather skirt. And I think it's gonna work. It's a little wrinkly right now. I think it's gonna work though because it has the seams in all the right places. Hers has one here and hers does have zips up the sides, but I have this already and it's free. So I'm trying to be more thrifty. And then the other thing I have, the other thing I have are her screen accurate tights that she actually wears. So I did buy these a year ago when I was like so excited I needed to have absolutely everything from this movie. So that is what they look like. I'm not gonna rip them because I recall that these were expensive. I'll put the price here and I'll put the screenshot of where they came from here. But love. I have one more thing I'll show you before I get to the reveal because it just makes me so happy. So this is about as screen accurate as you can get because this bag was a custom piece that was originally listed on Etsy from a designer in Canada that the costume designer picked up for the aesthetic. So I commissioned that same designer. She goes by Kilner Goods on Etsy. She was absolutely amazing to work with and I couldn't be more obsessed with how it came out. And I've already used this for a year in my daily life, like obsessed. And now that you've listened to all of my tangents, thanks so much for being here and the moment you've all been waiting for, the review. because I have thoughts on this costume and I'm definitely going to be remaking certain elements of it. For one, I think I am gonna remake the jacket because it's just too shiny for my liking. And also because I patterned this a year ago when I had less skills than I have now and I didn't remake the pattern because I was doing this in two days. Prison of my own making. <sighs> I think that this whole area is much too open. It needs to be more it honestly needs to be more like this kind of a neckline, but this is what's happening, so that's fine. Remaking the jacket. So thoughts on the corset? The whole time we were being so dramatic because I really, really, really thought that this was gonna be the worst element of the cosplay. However, it's actually now my favorite. So I think the fit is perfect. I am actually, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm floored, I'm, I'm very surprised by that. This fabric I'm going to replace, this is all just clothes pinned on. This I'd like to replace with this fabric and this bottom fabric I think is too thin. Hers almost looks like linen-y, so I'd like to replace with that. But for the most part, oh, and then of course, like when we get more information about what this, this looks like under, like is this, could, could this be a full shirt under? We do not know. What does the back look like? There are many mysteries that we may not find out until October 4th, but with all that said, I'm very happy with how this came out for a first iteration. I'm so excited for the Joker movie and I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just over the moon having my Harley Quinn inspiration back. Okay, well thank you guys so much for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and come back for more cosplay content in the future. I will be doing a makeup tutorial for how we do this look. So stay tuned for that. And then I may remake this whole thing ahead of the movie release or like maybe I'll make another outfit if we get more from the trailer. So who even knows? The possibilities are limitless and I am so excited. Okay, love you, bye.